Hi, I'm Sherwin Branson, the pastor of Laketon Bethel. This is the second Sunday where we're not holding regular worship services due to the coronavirus. So welcome to Laketon Bethel, which is empty right now. It feels quite strange. But welcome to Laketon Bethel anyway, the church that values authenticity over hype. Today I want to talk a little bit about, well, being grounded because sometimes that's just what this feels like to not be able to do anything, to not be able to go anywhere. And I'm sure some of you who are listening have been grounded when you were much younger, or maybe not so much younger. We've all had different experiences with that. Some of us have had experiences with the time out chair where a parent or a teacher or someone would put us in a chair until we could learn to behave ourselves. We would have a time to reflect on what it was that we did that put us in that chair anyway in the first place. And sometimes we just need some downtime for some R&R. &R. We rest till we get bored and then we end up going back to work. Some people get sabbaticals. A lot of professors do that. Every seven years they get a paid year off or a paid semester off at least to do whatever it is they need to do. Sometimes they rest, sometimes they work, sometimes they do research, sometimes they study. Pastors in the Reformed Church get one week a year of study leave that can accumulate up to seven. Now, I always take mine every year because I like to use it for planning. But the purpose of a sabbatical is to rest, to renew, to reflect on life and the direction that you're going, to learn, and to reconnect with God. That's why we have these sabbaticals. But for most of us, that's just unheard of. We rarely take intentional downtime. We rarely take time for reflection. We don't have time to do that. Some folks take gap years. Some kids are doing that between high school and college or between college and the first job. And sometimes people get a gap year not by choice but they're laid off from their work. Or, like right now, being sent home because of a coronavirus. Now, I'm not saying that God caused this coronavirus. It is possible, but we don't know that. I just want to ask the question today, what if God is causing this? What if this is something that's part of his plan? What if he ordered this? He says, I'm going to call some folks home because their time is up. And the rest of you are going to get through this, but there's going to be some changes. You're all going to have to take some time off. Many will work from home. Some won't work at all. Now, in this time of downtime, what are we going to do? What is going to be our best response? How can we use this ordeal with this virus to make us better? We have this downtime now. How can we use it best? Now, there's some advice from Jesus on this, some that we learn from the Gospel of Luke. There's a story in the Gospel of Luke where, where Jesus stops in at the home of his friends, Mary and Martha, and there's some downtime taking place there. Here's how it reads from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. Now, wouldn't it have been nice to have been a fly on the wall there to hear what Jesus was teaching to Mary? Maybe he was teaching her the summary of all of his teachings, like it says in Matthew 7, verse 12, to treat others the way you want to be treated. Maybe he was talking to her about his new commandment, where he says, a new command I give to you, that you love each other just as I've loved you. That's how they'll know that you're my disciples. That's how they'll know you're my students. But one thing is for certain, Jesus was enriching Mary's soul she was taking the time to listen to him, to reflect with him, and to have her own soul enriched. Her sister saw things differently. The passage goes on like this. 
But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Martha, like you and me, seemed to be at that point distracted by life, by all the busyness that goes on. And she thought that was unfair that Mary got to sit at Jesus' feet and she had to do all the work. She's complaining about that. Almost sounds a little bit whiny. Almost sounds a little familiar. Almost sounds like me sometimes. The passage goes on like this. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. That's almost a rebuke. One thing, Mary has discovered it. One thing that won't be taken away. See, the soul is the only thing we get to keep for eternity. And Mary was taking care of her soul. Martha was taking care of dinner. But Jesus was there. He was there for both of them, and he was going to help both of them. So Mary's taking a, a break, sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus is talking to her. You and I are all going to have a break because of this virus that's coming around. There's nothing we can do about it. Things are shut down. Can't go to Walmart at midnight anymore. All kinds of things are closed. What is God trying to say to us through this coronavirus? What is he saying to my kids who aren't working at their regular jobs? What is he saying to the 30,000 students of Grand Valley who can't go to class? What does he want us to learn from this? How can we reflect on what is most important? I mean, the bars are closed, we can't go there. The restaurants are closed, we can't go there. Schools are closed, so those of us who have children at home get to hang out with our kids. Many of us can work from home. That's one of the benefits I've enjoyed for many years. I've always had a home office as long as I've been a pastor, and I've enjoyed that. Many of us will be doing less work than normal. This gives us time to reflect on what is most important. It gives us time to reflect on the teachings of Jesus. Because the more you live these teachings, the better your life is. The more we follow the teachings of Jesus, the better decisions we'll make. And the better decisions we'll make, the fewer regrets we have. So maybe this time with this virus is a time to solidify your relationship with him. To be calm. You'll get through this. He is with you. So let this be a time of feeding your soul. When I was a little boy, I would stay at my grandma's house sometimes. And she had a peculiar habit of sitting in her chair in the dark, all by herself in her living room. I always thought that was kind of strange, but that was her time to be alone with God. She prayed, she thought, she listened to what God had to say to her. And when we try to practice this ourselves, just taking some time to sit alone with no screens, no speakers, and invite God to direct our thoughts, he will do it. Sometimes this works really well, and it can be a real life changer, and of course, sometimes you just get a nap. But oftentimes, when we invite God to speak to us in the quiet, he does. This pandemic's gonna pass. Someday it will be over. One thing is for certain, it will change us. It'll change you and it'll change me. We get to decide how it's going to change us. My hope for all of you is that your faith grows, 
My hope for myself is that my faith grows through this. I hope we can all discover what really matters. I hope that we can all figure out just what is going on with this thing. I hope our faith is renewed in ways that we can't even imagine now. And like Mary so many years ago, I hope we can all relax at the feet of the Master. Thanks for listening.